Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we've got an episode of Spare Change. Some episodes just don't fit in any of my other playlists, so this is where they end up. The topics on these episodes can vary pretty widely, so stay tuned to see what's in store for this one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. So on today's episode, it's going to be a brand new kind of episode called Boom or Bust. And this is a different kind of concept that I really haven't tackled before, but I hope you enjoy it. So basically, it's going to be a deck idea, and I'm going to pitch it to you. I haven't built this deck yet. It's not finalized. It's just kind of uh, a pile of cards essentially at this point and I want to see if you think this is a good idea or not so if it's a good idea you you can say that it's a boom if it's a bad idea you're going to say that it's a bust and there's going to be a poll at the end of this episode where you get to vote one way or the other if a lot of you think it's a boom I'll make it into a deck and there'll be a deck tech on it if you think it's a bust I'm going to throw it away and never look at it again so that's basically the concept. So I want to let you know, or I want you know, I would like you to let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of episode or not. Uh, I'm just trying to do something different, you know, get the community a little more involved. So we'll see. Yeah. Anyways, let's jump into the deck. So my first boom or bust episode is going to be centered around a commander that I've actually already done before, but I want to do this one in a different way. So Kenrith Return King, one of my personal favorite decks, one that I own. I'm actually thinking about tweaking quite a bit. And it actually came about because of one of the companions coming up. But let's go through one card at a time. So Kenrith Return King is a 5-5 human noble that costs 4 and a white. It's got a lot of abilities, so here we go. Pay a red. All creatures gain trample and haste until end of turn. Pay 1 and a green. Put a plus minus 1 counter on target creature. Pay 2 and a white. Target player gains 5 life. Pay 3 and a blue. Target player draws a card. And pay 4 and a black. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. So basically, five abilities, uh, a couple of them are going to be really relevant for this deck, and they're actually going to be different, oh, not different ones entirely from my initial one, but we'll get to that in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the companion for this deck is going to be Zerda the Dawn Waker. Zerda is a 3-3 elemental fox that costs one Boros Boros and has companion. Each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana and that cost to less than one mana. And by paying one and tapping it, target creature can't block this turn. So the part that we really care about is that activated ability is costing less. Obviously with Kenrith, that is fantastic. Kenrith has one, two, three, four abilities that get reduced by that. Uh, two of them get reduced down to one mana and the others get reduced down to two and three mana. So the one that I actually want to focus on with this deck, though, is that last ability of Kenrith, which is putting creatures back from the graveyard back into play under our control. Well, our creatures in our graveyard back into play under our control. So, and it also helps uh, reduce the cost of other things, too. Obviously, if we have activated abilities of other creatures, it's going to help with that. And so the way that I thought about taking this one is a Kenrith Zerda cycling deck. So, essentially, Zerda reduces the cost of all, your, all of your cycling uh, activate abilities as well as Kenris abilities too. So instead of paying a lot for certain cycling effects, we're paying a lot less. So, so we can pay, you know, one man to cycle something instead of three for most circumstances. So basically a cycling reanimate deck is the initial concept here. You cycle big creatures into your graveyard that have cycling. Then you reanimate them with Kenrith for three mana apiece, and bada bing, bada boom, you've got a lot of big creatures on the board, and you can make them hasty and give them trample with Kenrith. You can make them bigger too. It's just, it seems like a lot of fun in a different direction than my initial Kenrith build. Obviously, Zerda does have that companion requirement, so you do have to make certain cuts that you wouldn't necessarily want to make uh, because you can't include certain cards that don't have activated abilities, but Zerda gives you enough of a discount to make that well worth it. So let's get into some, other card, some of the other cards. So some big cyclers actually came from the most recent set, Ikoria. 
Uh, Titanoth Rex uh, and Void Beckoner are going to be really big, huge, giant <laughs> threats on the board for you. Uh, Titanoth Rex uh, is an 11-11 with Trample. Uh, it costs 7 green green, but you're not going to be paying that cost because you're just going to cycle it for 1 into green, or if Zerd is out, just for a green. And when you cycle it, you put a Trample counter on target creature you control. Uh, Void Beckoner is an 8-8 Death Touch that costs 6 black black, but again, it's got cycling for 2 into black, or if Zerd is in play, just a black. And when you cycle it, you can put a Death Touch counter on target creature you control. So these have cycling uh, benefits. Whenever you cycle them, you benefit from them. Uh, cycling, you're not only discarding them, drawing a card, but you're also putting a counter on something as well. Uh, and then when they're in play, uh, you get them back in play with, uh, with Kenrith. You have a huge, big threat on the board that you can, again, give Trample, put plus one, plus one counters on. You can just make them into huge, giant threats, which is just fun. Uh, you can also use, obviously, older cycling cards uh, that have been around for quite a while now, like Crows and Tusker. It's a 6-5, which is still a, you know, a, a pretty big threat on the board. Uh, it's got cycling for two to green, but when you cycle it, you also get to search your library for a basic land card and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So there's a lot of cycling creatures out there that give you a lot of other benefits when you cycle them. So you're going to be filling this deck, and again, this is not a full list. I don't have every single card in it. I'm just going to go through a few examples. Uh, but basically, again, you've got a lot of creatures in there that can become threats. Uh, you're going to cycle them for cheap, reanimate them for cheap. So you're also going to want some other cards that help you benefit whenever you cycle. So some new cards like Valiant Rescuer and Dran Stinger can come in huge. Valiant Rescuer says whenever you cycle another card for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 human soldier creature token. So those can be just fodder, you know, for, for blocking, or they can actually help get you get through with some attacks uh, once you have a, you know, big enough soldier army to do so. Drana Stinger says whenever you cycle another card, Drana Stinger deals one damage to each opponent. Just being able to ping every single player for, you know, essentially dealing three damage uh, every single time you cycle, that's that's huge. That can add up a lot. Glinthorn Buccaneer, a older card, not Ikoria, uh, can help out with that as well. It says whenever you discard a card, Glinthorn Buccaneer deals one damage to each opponent. So again, dealing out a ton of damage just by cycling cards, it's gonna it's gonna add up throughout the game. Archfiend of Ifnir says, whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponent's control. You're shrinking your opponent's creatures, making it easier for your creatures to get through. It's also going to take out a ton of creatures too. Take out your opponent's small creatures and eventually their big creatures because you're going to be cycling a ton of cards with this stack. Curator Mystery says, whenever you cycle or discard another card, scry one. So just another value uh, off of every single cycle. Again, helping you kind of filter those draws instead of drawing into a land that might not help you. You can draw into another creature that you can cycle into your graveyard or something else valuable too. One piece of graveyard synergy that can be great in this deck is Songs of the Damned. It's an instant for a black and it says add black for each creature card in your graveyard. So you're going to be cycling a ton of creatures into your graveyard and then you cast a Songs of the Damned for, I don't know, 10. Then you can use that mana to reanimate those creatures. You can use it to cycle more cards and so on and so forth. It can just be a huge value spell that is you know pretty innocuous in itself but in a deck like this it can really take advantage of all those creatures that you're cycling into your graveyard something else that really doesn't see too much play that i think could be an absolute bomb in this deck is twilight's call it's a sorcery that you can cast at instant speed for pay by paying two extra uh, it costs four black black and it says each player returns all creature cards from the graveyard to play yes this will benefit your opponents but most likely you're going to have the most creatures in your graveyard since your deck is built around cycling creatures, getting them into your graveyard, then you cast one of these, and instead of having to activate Kenrith multiple times to get creatures out, you just get a huge flood of creatures all at once. Then Kenrith can give them haste and trample, and you can just take over the game from there. Again, there's a lot of fun and cool things that you can do with this. There's that, you know, restriction that, that Zerda brings to the deck. It makes it really interesting and helps, kind of, not helps, I guess, but it, it takes away certain cards that you otherwise would, you know, be a shoe in for a Kenrith deck like a will breaker or something like that. And you can't use that then. So it makes you kind of go in a different route. And I think that this cycling one is pretty interesting. So, so now it's time for you to decide, is this deck concept a boom or a bust? Kenrith, Zerda, cycling, reanimator, or whatever you want to call it. Again, I think it, I think it's a pretty cool deck idea, but you know, you might think differently and that's okay. So there's going to be a poll, I believe. I don't know where I'm at in the screen here or here, probably. So make sure you click on that and vote boom if you think it's a good idea and I should build a full deck on it. Or bust if you think it's a terrible idea and I should just scrap it and never think about it again. So, yeah, you get to decide. It's up to you. So, think carefully. So in the comments below, please let me know what you think about this new series, Boom or Bust. Is the series itself a boom or bust? Do you like this new kind of episode where I basically pitch a new deck idea and you get to help determine its future? So, if you think that's a good concept, great. If not, let me know that too. 
Anyways, I think that's all we got for today. Again, make sure you vote on if the Kenrith cycling deck is a boomer bust. I can't remember if it's going to be here or here. That's why I'm doing this. I'm not just dancing. Uh, anyways, though, thanks again and have a good one. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who help make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one. <laughs>